Hello, my YouTube family. Hope all is well. I thank God for another day that I can come before you. Praise God just to talk about the Word of God. And before I even start, I just want to go ahead and say this real quick. Please go ahead and like the video, share, praise God, and of course, turn on your notifications. Praise God. I um, Today... I want to talk about um, the book of Ruth. Praise God. There are so many, so many nuggets in that, so many lessons that we can learn from that one small book. Praise God. And um, for my, my theme tonight, I want to talk about having an ear to hear God, um, having an open ear so you can hear Praise God when God speaks to you in situations. Praise God. And I'm going to go ahead and just read a few verses. Um, Ruth chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 1 through 6. And it reads, In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech, his wife's name was Naomi, and the name of his two sons were Malon and, and Kilion. They were Euphrates from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about 10 years, both Malon and Kilion also died. And Naomi was left without her two sons and her husbands. When Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughter now prepared to return home from there. Praise God. So a wonderful story about um, Naomi. Praise God. This is a a family, a Jewish family, praise God, who was living in Bethlehem. And there was a famine. And we know that Bethlehem really means the house of bread. So we're seeing here, because there was a famine, because they were troubled, Naomi's husband, Elimelech, decided to move, to go some, to move to another area where there were no lack, they were um, um, probably prosperity, they were um, good things happening there. But we have to remember, um, you know, in God's word, I think, I believe it's in Malachi, in the book of Malachi, it talks about whenever trouble comes as famine or anything like that, that you stay where you are and you depend on God. Now you start trusting God for uh, your provision. Praise God. But in this case, they decided to move. And um, when they moved, they lived, uh, dwell in the land of Moab, it said, for 10 years. And then, of course, it said the husband died, Elimelech died. So apparently when they were living in Moab, they were still practicing their Jewish religion and worshiping the one true God. But it said after Elimelech died that they married Moabite woman. The two sons married Moab. They took Moabite wife. And we have to remember that the Moabites, um, God had cursed them and had told the Israelites not to have any type of contact with them. And that happened because when they, the Israelites were in, um, in the wilderness, when God was leading them to the promised land, when they got to Moab, when they were uh, trying to pass through Moab, the king of Moab at that time had called Balaam, praise God. The king Balaam wanted Balak to um, curse God's people because he didn't want them to travel through his um, the city to get to where they had to go. So he caused uh, Balak, he wanted Balak to curse them, but we know the story that when God has a blessing on you, no man can curse you. Praise God. That's a word in itself that this Balak, he's a, um, um, some form of diviner or something like that, that, you know, practices voodoo or curses, whatever that is, black magic. And we see here that he tried to curse the Israelites and he could not because God, praise God, was, um, was intervening for them and God allowed him to only, whenever he opened his mouth, 
to curse them, only blessings would come out. Praise God. So I just want anyone out there to know that is listening, praise God, that when you are a child of God, praise God, when you are under the protection and the covering of God, no matter what people try to do to you, to curse you or to, you know, uh, um, um, try to put whatever on you, roots or whatever they call it, that will never happen because you have the covering and the protection, praise God, of God. And the protection of God is more powerful than any dark demon, than any spirit, praise God, uh, that is out there. So that um, is one word in this message as well, praise God. So because of that, uh, God told the, the children of Israel not to have any interaction with the Moabite people, praise God. So we see here after their father died, after Elimelech died, Naomi's husband, her sons decided to marry Moabite woman. So we're seeing here, apparently the dad were, when he was alive, because they were probably still practicing, you know, um, the, the um, being obedient to the law of not, you know, connecting with the Moabites, you know, as in intermarrying and marrying them, Praise God that after the dad died, that the sons decided to do that. So here we are seeing disobedience here. Praise God of the sons marrying Moabite woman. Praise God. But then it said here that they both died as well. The Bible didn't say, you know, um, what happened or how they died. But if you do a study on their name, one of them, the name, one means sick and one means feeble. Praise God. So in their name, you can tell that <laughs> their name was their identity. It tell what was going to happen. Praise God. And we see that that did happen, that they both died. So after they died, we know the story that they knew, the, um, Naomi decided to go back to um, Bethlehem. But this is uh, the message I wanted to bring out of this. It says in verse 6, it says, when Naomi heard praise God, in Moab, that the Lord had come to the aid of the people by providing food for them in Bethlehem, she decided to get up and move. So she heard, you know, how many times when we're in situation, praise God, we are so caught up in our situation that we can't hear the word of God. We can't hear a word from God, praise God. But even in the midst of of her situation, because if we continue to read it, we realize that after her husband died, after her sons died, she changed her name to Mara. Praise God. She called herself, she was bitter because she said the dog, the, you know, God has done bitterly to her. You know, he took away her family. Praise God. So she allowed her situation to change her identity. Praise God. She was no longer Naomi, but she said, call me Mara. Now, someone that is bitter, praise God. And, um, but even in her bitterness, she was able to still hear what God was doing in the city of her hometown. Praise God. She could have been, you know, one of those people that were so, uh, you know, consumed with what was happening to her, consumed in her bitterness of losing her family, that even when she heard that God was doing, you know, good things in Bethlehem, she um, could have said, you know, so what, you know, being so angry, I'm not going to go back there. I'm not going to go back to a country where that God was, you know, you, you know, uh, took away my family, but she had the hear to, to, to an ear to hear, praise God, that God was being good to his people in Bethlehem. So she decided to get up and go. And we know the ending to the story, what happened, praise God. It's so many good thing in this, um, so many good, um, lessons in that story that we can hurt that we can glean from but one thing i wanted to talk about was that she heard you know what was happening and she decided to move you know because sometimes we can be so you know consumed with what's happening to us that we decide to stay in it praise god so you know uh whatever you may be going through you know sometimes we have to trust god in the situation that god is, you know, um, 
is for me, that God is going to get me out of this. But we have to be careful when to um, hear the word of God. Praise God that we are able to move when God says to move. Praise God. So we know that Naomi also had to move out of that environment because she was in a, a city where, you know, God was against those people. So it was good for her to move. So sometimes we have to have an an ear as well, praise God, if God is, is, is wanting us to move from a certain situation, to move from a certain location, you know, to move from an environment. And your environment doesn't have to be a place only. In this case, in Naomi's situation, it was a place, a location she had to move from, praise God. But your location could be uh, uh, things or people that are around you. It could be uh, uh, toxic people. It could be your environment, praise God. And because of that, that environment you're not able to hear the word of the lord because you know that environment is um has consumed you as you know consumed your time as can uh, 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 as consumed the the ear gate your eye gate that you're not able to see and hear the word of god praise god so um this lesson is so awesome because it showed us hallelujah that naomi was still in tune praise god with god even though she she was still, she was a bitter woman at this time. She still was able to hear what was happening and moved from that location. Praise God. So I hope, praise God, something was said here to help someone with whatever you're going through. Examine the situation. Is it a location? That's the problem. Is it the people around you? That's the problem. Praise God. That's your environment. Is it the people? Is it a, a, a particular thing? It could be anything. Praise God. But that's why we need the spirit of discernment. Praise God. That's why we need to have a, a, a an ear to hear. Hallelujah. From the Lord. What is it he wants us to do? Praise God. So I hope something was said here. Praise God. That we need to have an our ear open. Praise God to hear what does say the Lord in specific situations. Praise God. And um, I want to say um, uh, the key thing for me to hear the word of God is to always be connected to God, to connect it to him. When I say connection, I mean we pray and we seek him because it's in the praying and the seeking that we're connecting now to the spirit of God. Hallelujah. We are now out of the flesh and we are into the spirit, as the Bible said, to renew the mind. Praise God. And once the mind is renewed, we're starting to have the mind of Christ. Praise God. And the mind of Christ is always connected to the spirit of God, to the spirit man. Hallelujah. And it is in, in that connection that we're able to start discerning the spirit of God and the voice of God. Hallelujah. When he speaks for us to move, hallelujah, from uh, it may be a location or a situation, praise God, or from people, hallelujah. So I hope something was said again, praise God, to encourage you on today. If you have time, go ahead and read the book of Ruth, such an awesome um, book and, and so much a message in there that the Holy Spirit can reveal to you, praise God, about what was happening in this book, praise God. And I think I'm going to um, continue on this um, book next time as well on Ruth and just talk about um, um, Ruth and how God blessed her, praise God, and what happened to her, the end result of what happened, praise God. So I think, yes, I'm going to do a series on the book of Ruth. So I thank you all so much for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. And until next time, remember Jesus loves you and don't you forget it. Bye now.